The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Greetings programs, Matthew here, you there, and this is the legendary NES Zapper. You see, I uh, had a hankering to play a little duck hunt, and unfortunately, this guy just doesn't work with a modern display. It has to do with the timing between the signal it receives from the television and coordinating that with the scan on the CRT. Anyway, we don't have any of that in our modern HD displays, so we're gonna have to try and improvise. So I'm thinking I'm gonna take one of these and add a little bit of a um, add a little bit of an Arduino to it. Probably make something that'll work with, say, a RetroPie or another emulation type system, and uh, be able to maybe not fully get the original experience, but get a reasonable facsimile thereof. So, let's get started. Amazing hacks, inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. So, to emulate a light gun in the RetroPie type setting, what I have to do is essentially create a device, human interface device, that will replicate a position of the zapper to a relative position on screen. So, in other words, I need a mouse. A lot of the emulator cores out there do support mouse input, so I think that's gonna be the way we go. So basically, I've got to turn the zapper into a mouse somehow. We've got a zapper here. Please excuse the crudity of this model. I didn't have time to paint it or build it to scale. So, zapper. There is, there's an Arduino. There is an Arduino variant that, uh, can emulate a mouse or a keyboard. So let's start with that. Got an Arduino in here, um, USB out. Somehow we gotta figure out how to, how to get some kind of uh, mouse movement. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make basically an air mouse. So where the, uh, the tip of the barrel here uh, then becomes the, uh, the movement of the cursor. So if I put like a gyro uh, in there on this end, I can put a gyro, uh, gyro or accelerometer and that would detect barrel movement and that would detect that and that would swing left, right, up, down, whatever. So essentially what we've got here is a situation where I've got a, a an air mouse. So I have a, a gyroscope, I have an Arduino that takes the gyroscope, um, parses that data for the movement, turns that into mouse movement and then goes out to the uh, RetroPie box. So that's how this is gonna work. Let's get this put together. Let me get some parts and we shall get this thing started. Okay, we've got our parts in from Element 14. So this is Adafruit's LSM9DS1. This is a uh, three axis accelerometer, gyroscope, and magnetometer, which is a little overkill, but it will work for our purposes. So that's gonna go at the end of the barrel right in there. And this is the uh, Arduino compatible that I was uh, thinking of. This is the AT Mega uh, 32U4. It's built into this little Adafruit feather board that we can easily program and work into our design. So it, that's handy. So essentially that's what we're gonna look at. Uh, we're gonna get this guy over here get this guy programmed, and uh, that should get us at least started. May need, uh, may need some other trinkets in here, but we'll figure that out as we go. So this is it. Let me get, uh, let me get these soldered with some pins. That way I can start prototyping this thing, and we'll see how that works.
So before we even get started with this thing, I need to install a couple of libraries for the Arduino IDE. So uh, to start, uh, we need to grab the LSM9DS1 library from the Adafruit GitHub. So we'll just download that. That's going down. We also need the Adafruit sensor library. So we will also get that as well. Okay, now that they're both downloaded, pop over here to the downloads folder, unzip each of those zip files. I like to rename them so they're not like master, you know, because they're not masters at this point, whatever, I don't know. Anyway, take both of those and we'll just put them over here in the Adafruit libraries folder, which on a Mac is uh, home documents Arduino libraries. So that's there, we can close that. And then uh, we'll load up our Arduino IDE environment. Okay, now we've got our environment loaded. We're going to open the example library. There's only one included with this one. It just reads out the, the raw data from the gyroscopes. So we're gonna get this assembled. We're gonna get this wired up on the breadboard and put this thing over onto the Arduino and we'll see if it actually works. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and plug in and the programmer, everything is ready to go. And we just upload it. Okay, looks like everything is done. Open up our serial monitor. We're at 115200 baud. And there we go, we have an output. So if we just start moving it around, look at that. You can see how these numbers will change as we kind of move things around. So do all kinds of fun stuff with it. Look at that. It's like that old NASA training device, right? So anyway, so we have pitch, we've got roll, and z-axis is our yaw. So now that I know that this thing basically works, I need to be able to turn these data into mouse cursor movements, essentially. Uh, so I need to look at that, and we'll get that going, and then we'll put this whole thing together, and we're going to be able to play some duck hunt. Okay, so here is the completed uh, sketch here. I'm gonna walk through this real quick. Basically what we have is a couple of pin definitions, accelerometer and the, uh, the trigger being the left mouse button. We're gonna define our refresh rate between polling intervals, because what we're doing essentially is polling the accelerometer for data. And every time you poll it for data, and you'll see it in a minute, uh, every time you poll it for data, then it changes the x, y coordinates for the mouse, for the mouse cursor. So you can adjust this number here, and of course the higher the number, the more coarse the movement is, and the lower, the smoother it is. So right now I've got it at a one millisec polling interval. That's optimal for me. Um, your mileage may vary. You, might, you may find that a little too sensitive, so you can adjust that number right there. Going into setup, uh, serial, I do have a serial out so you can monitor it and make sure it works, make sure everything's working. You can uh, diagnose things if, if it doesn't work. We get the mouse button and then we start doing the mouse emulation. And then it jumps down here to the loop section. Uh, basically reads the, uh, reads the digital pin that I'm using for the mouse input. And if that goes high, then it's a, a click. And then we update the sensor values whenever new data is available. So basically just updating our accelerometer sensor. Read the accelerometer state. If the mouse button, then we've got, you know, if, if the trigger's pulled, then uh, we've got a click state. Uh, and then down here, if it needs to move, uh, then it jumps down here to the move mouse function. And what it's doing is it's going to move the mouse according to the movement of the accelerometer uh, relative to the movement of the accelerometer. And at the same time, just for diagnostic purposes, uh, it will also print out what it's moving. Uh, so you've got that. So you've got a little bit of both. So it'll move X, it'll move Y, and, uh, and then we have the trigger button 
for that. So let's go ahead and get this uh, put onto the Arduino. My very long uh, USB cable, and this is, this is going to be the actual USB cable that I use uh, for the final device, the final build, just to give you a nice little bit of uh, distance there. Dongles. Dongles. Okay, and go ahead and click upload. Okay, so while that's doing its thing, I wanted to take a second and uh, respond to some of the comments that you've been leaving on element14.com forward slash presents. Now, uh, you might remember back, this was my like very first solo project that I've done on the channel, was Project Pripyat. It was this uh, DIY Geiger counter and uh, had a lot of great, great comments and questions about this thing. And uh, this first one comes from David, who says he loved the video. I work in radiotherapy, so I work with man-made radiation, but I've also been to Pripyat, Chernobyl, etc. I've designed and built my own Geiger counter called the DMGC-02. Uh, I've been working on it for a few years. Features GPS location, SD logging, Nokia LCD display, rechargeable Lion battery, micro USB for charging, and serial data logging. It runs on a PIC rather than an Arduino, but I reckon you could easily incorporate some of the features that I have. Dude, that's freaking rad! I love it! This was kind of a, uh, this was just kind of a, a, a prototype, a, an idea, if you will, proof of concept that I wanted to make in the style of the old uh, CDV series. But dude, what you've got there, that is really freaking cool. And I mean, just blows that out of the water just because of the extra features that you have there, the GPS and the, and the, the logging. The really cool thing about this is that you could actually incorporate that uh, into like some citizen science projects that I've seen where uh, they take readings, radiation readings from all over the globe. It kind of started off in the, in the wake of, of Fukushima. But um, yeah, they got, they've got data from everywhere logging in. I'm sure you're already into that and that's really freaking cool. So kudos to you, my friend, kudos on, on this. That is freaking rad. Thank you for that comment and you have earned yourself a swank. Element 14 Presents t-shirt. Um, we'll be getting in touch with you and sending you one of those. As for the rest of you guys, if you have comments, questions, anything like that, let us know in the community, element14.com forward slash presents. Leave your comments there and perhaps we will read them in a future video. So now back to this thing. Okay, looks like that's done. And there you go. You can see it on the screen as I move the mouse around. Well, I, as I move the, the assembly around, you can see that little cursor is just jumping all over the place there. So it's not like jumping all over the place. It is moving relative to the, um, to the sensors. So with that, I think we got something that works here. So now I just need to put this whole thing together inside of our little shell. And I think we got something. There we go. Ah, dang. There we go. Yeah.
a little tougher. Barker Bills is like actually kind of a tough game because of the way the balloons move. There we go, got one. Got him. Gotcha was my jam back in the day. Gotta give it a little bit of a challenge, right? Okay, so now we have a USB connected uh, zapper gun that will work with a modern display. Uh, it doesn't work with the original hardware, of course, but it does work on our emulators. So you can fire up your RetroPie, you can plug this guy in, set it up in the settings, and there you go. You have got a light gun, uh, at least a reasonable facsimile, um, you're emulating, you're emulating a light gun on an emulator. So there you go. If you'd like to build your own version of Project Quickshot, you can get the bill of materials, the Arduino code, and everything else at element14.com. Just search for Project Quickshot. You can also find out information, news, and upcoming events. In the meantime, my name is Matthew, and until next time, tally ho, y'all. Mm -hmm.